Antibiotic resistant bacteria are one of the biggest threats to human health around the world today. This is a problem that's been getting worse and worse for years. We now have bacterial isolates that are being found from patients that are resistant to most of the antibiotics that we would use to treat them. This is a problem in the developing world, but also in countries such as the UK. Antibiotics underpin all of modern medicine, and without antibiotics, you wouldn't be able to do complicated surgeries, hip replacements, we wouldn't be able to treat cancer patients effectively. So if we lose the ability to use antibiotics to treat bacterial infections, it compromises all of modern medicine. I'm just going to briefly talk about two case studies of some of the work into antibiotic resistance we've done here at Birmingham. Now, both of these studies relate to understanding how and when bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. As our ability to treat resistant infections is becoming more difficult due to resistance, we need to try and prevent resistance from occurring in the first place. The first of these studies was led by Professor Laura Piddock. Laura has been a major researcher into resistance at Birmingham for a long time. Now, what Laura did was show that the use of antibiotics in animals can select for resistant bugs in the animals that are then passed into the food chain and can cause infections in humans that are then difficult to treat because they're resistant to those specific drugs. Now, her work proved the molecular mechanisms by which the bacteria could become resistant to the antibiotic were the same in the human isolates and those in the animals, and she showed the selective conditions under which this occurred. The second case study is one that I led where we showed that if you expose bacteria to biocides, now these are common uh, products that we use in hospitals, farms, and in the home increasingly, and were often known as disinfectants, that bacteria respond to the, expose, to the stress from the biocide the same way that they do to when you expose them to an antibiotic, as in their ability to resist the action of the drug is the same. So if you expose a bacteria to a biocide, it can become antibiotic resistant. Both the case studies I've mentioned briefly already have been used as evidence by lawmakers to change laws. So the case study that Laura led, which I spoke about showing that the use of antibiotics in animals can select for resistant bugs in the food chain, was used by the Food and Drug Administration in America. And they actually banned the use of those antibiotics in animals to prevent the selection of resistance from occurring. Similarly, the work that I led on biocides has been used by the European Union, and they have changed the uh, European-wide law about how biocides are registered, and now it's a requirement for any new biocide to be registered that it should show that it does not select for antibiotic-resistant bacteria. So both of these case studies have shown that we can have impact from our basic science, and this basic science has turned into changes in laws which have affected millions of people around the world. The fight is far from over. Resistance is a massive problem. Resistant pathogens are evident, and they are in hospitals, and they're in the community all around the world. So the UK Chief Medical Officer suggested that antibiotic resistance should be considered to be as serious as terrorism. It's on the WHO's Global Risk Register as one of the biggest threats to human health going forward. So going forward, what we need to do is understand more and more about how bacteria become resistant to antibiotics and the key things they need to do to survive and cause infection, survive in hospitals and cause infection in the host. And this gives us the opportunity to identify new weak points in their biology that we can exploit to develop new therapies. We have a lack of new antibiotics. There may be some that will be developed in the next 10, 20 years, but it's a very expensive and very time-consuming business. What we do need to do, though, is to be creative in the way that we think and that the research um, that we're doing at Birmingham is able to be used and translated into new therapies to try and prevent resistant bugs from being able to survive, to cause damage, to be passed from host to host.